Welcome back to Grit Gym. We're actually at Grit Gym today, so we're back with our uh, with our normal backdrop, our mm -hmm. natural backdrop, because this is really not a green screen. This is like real squat racks and real weights behind us. But thanks for being here, guys. It's 12:30 every day. We're coming at you every weekday. We're coming at you with ways that you can improve your health, your exercise, your nutrition, your mindset, and your recovery. Uh, so today. We were actually supposed to have a guest, but anyway, we, did, we were supposed to have a guest, but we didn't have, we don't have a guest today. So today we have, uh, we're talking about supplementation. Okay, supplementation comes in a lot of different forms, a lot of different brands out there. What do you pick? What do you do? Why do you do it? Right? It's kind of hard to navigate all of this because there's so much, just there's so much garbage out there. There's so much stuff out there. There's so much information out there. Like, what do you choose? And I know I talk about a lot of lies on this show, a lot of things like apple cider vinegar, for instance. It's a total bogus thing, uh, or like how coconut oil is somehow going to solve every one of your problems that you possibly have, which is not accurate whatsoever. There's a lot of lies out there, so how do you navigate this? What do you pick for supplementation? Because there's, an, there's a big error that happens in either of the extremes here, okay? And I know I talk a lot about you not gotta live in both extremes at the same time, but that's to figure out where you need to sit. So if we go to both extremes, if we go to take, taking everything underneath the sun, that's an error. If we go to be taking and being hardcore stubborn to, I'm never gonna take anything, that's also an error. So those are both errors. So what do you take? What do you take? How, what kind of nutrition do you bring into your body? dictates a lot of what you do with your supplementation. Now, if you do not have your nutrition on point, if you're not eating a vegetable with every single meal, if you're not eating at least a palm, a palm size amounts portion of uh, meats, uh, fish, some kind of protein, and I'm not talking about beans, tofu is not a protein source, it's a carb source, it's total bullshit, it's bogus, it's bullshit, it's nonsense, it's ridiculous to call tofu a protein source. It is a carbohydrate source, there's very little, there's, uh, there's not that much protein in tofu. So you have to have a palm size amount of, of protein, you've gotta have a good portion, at least one fist, it'd be better to have two fists of vegetables and you want some type of fruits probably smaller than your about the size of your fist in each one of your meals okay that's the, that's just a basic that's just you're gonna put that in every single meal no matter what accept it that's where you're gonna go okay so but so you got that on point what do you want to do on top of that okay some of this is going to be a little bit dependent on the person but there are a foundational three that I try to get everybody on I try to get everybody on three supplements that I barely even consider supplements at this point because the, the amount of research behind each one of these is, is just so abundant and, and so amazing that it's, it's hard to deny that they should be in your nutrition. So it's hard to say that they're supplements. I just think you just take them. Just accept it. Just take them. They're great for you. We want them in our, in our diet. Okay. Then there's other things that maybe, maybe you use, maybe you don't use. It's completely up to you and then there's other ones that are kind of uh, based on your on your individual body and lifestyle so you want to get into it should we get into it please before that before I really jump into this stuff please slap that like button slap the share button send this out to everybody that you know there's a lot of bogus material out there on supplementation and I'm not gonna get too much into brands here I will a little bit there are a few brands that I really I uh, want you to move towards, and there's a mountain of brands uh, that I want you to stay away from. Okay, so, uh, and I'll get into those here in a second. Now, what kind of supplementations are we talking about? There's fish oil, vitamin D, vitamins and minerals in general, uh, protein powders, there's, uh, there's creams that you apply to your skin, there's, uh, there, I, it's, it's kind of insane how much is actually out there. What should you take? Okay, the three that I try to get everybody on, regardless, it's a fish oil, a probiotic, and a vitamin D. So what, what's a fish oil, for, for starters? Because there's a lot of good fatty acids that are out there that, besides just fish oil, okay? So there's like CLA. CLA is found to it, it, it conjugate linoleic acid. It's, it's, uh, it's found mostly in like grass-fed beef and grass-fed uh, beef products. It's extremely, extremely good for you 
but it's not outrageously high in fish oil. So what is it about fish oil that makes it? Fish oil is a, is a strong anti-inflammatory. So what does that do in your body? Well, we, the, the research is moving towards uh, the thing that kills you with, that we, want, we thought that high cholesterol was the thing that killed you. Well, high cholesterol is not the thing that, that actually ends up killing you. It's the plaque buildup, right? And the, and the plaque buildup happens because of the inflammation of the arterial wall. Okay, so fish oil helps with inflammation, decreasing uh, a lot of that. So your joints are going to feel better, your organs are going to work better, your brain is going to work better. Uh, it's been proven repeatedly to be a, a, a treatment or a cure for depression, anxiety, and other mental uh, dis uh, disorders or diseases. Um, things like attention deficit, hyperactivity, and, uh, and dyslexia, um, what do you call those? Uh, symptoms of that i don't like calling them symptoms i don't even like calling that a disorder but let's call it let's just put it a category where the medical field likes to put it now those seem to shrink with the presence of fish oil so your mood improves your memory improves your mental acuity improves everything kind of improves when we put people on fish oil because we're balancing out the fats that are going into the body now we now you're in iowa right now we're in iowa city right now so we're in the center, very center of the country. And if you're watching this from other states, where some of you have sent me messages saying that you watch this uh, video from other states, maybe not at the time when it's live, but you watch it later and ask me questions. Uh, if you looked at Iowa, actually from this side, uh, it looks like a face, right? Iowa City is in the corner of the lip. So that's where you're talking, right in the middle of the country. Okay, we, we, uh, we don't get, we get all four seasons and we're not out in the sun a ton, but when it is hot, it, when the sun beats down, it is going to be a warm, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make you, uh, it'll burn just about any, anybody. So why do you want, why is that significant for somebody with their supplementation? Well, that's significant for the next supplement that we're going to talk about, which is vitamin D. Hey, vitamin D is another one that's just been shown just to be outrageously effective in our body for, for health reasons. Okay? Vitamin D is extremely effective. And what is it? I think it's like it's preventative of 17 different cancers, and, and, and that number seems to be uh, on the rise. It seems to be going up. It, uh, people who have higher vitamin D levels tend to have lower body composition, so they have lower body fat content. Um, there's, I mean, there's just tons and tons and tons of stuff that vitamin D seems to have a very good positive effect on your body. The other nice thing about vitamin D is that it's super inexpensive. It's a very, very inexpensive supplement. Um, now I have a bunch of brands out here in front of me and I, I don't really want to pull them up right now because I want to kind of stick to just the conceptual version of, but vitamin D is a super inexpensive supplement. By the time you actually paid for the test to have your vitamin D test, uh, to get your vitamin D results. You could have paid for a couple years worth of vitamin D supplementation. It's extremely inexpensive uh, supplement, supplement to take. So how much should you take depends on your skin tone and the amount of uh, exposure that you have to the sun. So vitamin D isn't from the sun. Some people think this. Vitamin D isn't necessarily fr isn't from the sun. What the sun does is it acts as a catalyst and your body responds by pulling more vitamin D, absorbing more vitamin D from the food that you do eat. Okay, so that's how the sun affects vitamin D. So just because you have a lot of uh, a sun exposure doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to absorb it out of your food, but your body's gonna work harder to do so. So when that happens, when we have, when we get a lot of, enough sunlight, then we're gonna produce more, we're gonna absorb more vitamin D from our food. This is a very good thing, however, extra supplementation isn't gonna bother you too much. So what I tend to lean more towards is, it's probably a good idea to take about 2,000 IU of vitamin D per day, and if you're gonna be stuck inside all day, it's probably a good idea to take 4,000, just to double that. I know some people that are on like 40,000 IU a day, and I know other people that, that think, uh, are concerned that taking too much vitamin D will actually be toxic to their body. Now. Vitamin D is a fat-soluble supplement. Uh, it's a fat-soluble vitamin, right? So take the difference between vitamin C and the vitamin D is that D, vitamin D is, uh, is fat-soluble. Vitamin C, you can, you can just take and take and take and take because your body's just gonna 
pee it out, right? It's just gonna filter it out, which is a little silly. You don't really need it. Uh, you don't really need that much vitamin C going into you. It's a, it, it'd be silly. But vitamin D is fat soluble, so you can get to too high levels, but you would have to be taking absurd amounts of it. So 2,000 to 4,000 IU per day, it's probably going to do just about anybody a very uh, a, a very good service. Uh, and one of the questions I get a lot is when do you start doing supplementation? I think junior high is probably a, a, a time when kids are kind of to the age where they understand that this is something that can be good for them uh, and they can be re responsible enough to do that. Now, if you have cancer, you have anything like that in your family, I think you should listen up because vitamin D and fish oil can be extremely good for helping prevent some of these things that might be happening in your family that you might be uh, kind of have a predisposition to. So you, maybe you don't have them just because they, your ancestors had them or other people in your family had them, but maybe something about your genetics makes you more susceptible to these things. You're just more likely to have them also. Now, what about the probiotic? Because this might be the number one. Probiotic might be your number one. I really think, me personally, I think it is. I think not, I think probiotic is your number one supplement that everybody has to be on, no doubt. Uh, I don't care if you eat, like eating, uh, uh, the, one of the things I hear a lot is, oh, I eat a lot of yogurt. I would still say you should be on a probiotic supplement. Even if you ate uh, kimchi, um, fermented pickles, uh, sauerkrauts, um, yo uh, Greek yogurt, for each one of those for every meal, which sounds kind of disgusting, doesn't it? Uh, to separate, those all sound delicious. Together, they, they sound awful. So even if you did have those for every single meal, I, feel, I still think you should take some kind of probiotic supplement. And the reason is, is because if you think about the evolution of us, okay, not just the evolution of uh, humans, but not just the evolution of mammals, but the evolution of multicellular organisms. Okay, the first thing that would have happened is that multi, uh, multiple cells would have accumulated into a tube where one end was the mouth and the other was, well, the other. And food would have tra been transported through that and processed to be able to delegate, so the other pieces could delegate more to what they were good at. Eventually, you would have created a arm to bring more food into that tube, then another arm to bring more food into that tube, and then maybe uh, legs to be able to carry you to more food to bring more food in that tube, and then you would have developed a, a, a head and a brain to bring more food into the tube. So everything is about putting food in that tube, okay? Probiotics create good, a, a good microbiome in that tube. The bacteria that's in that tube is extremely important to your health. It's extremely important to your mood, to, your, to, the, to how your mind works, to how your body can process the food that you do eat, to how it can process all of its stuff. Your gut even has its own nervous system. It's called your enteric nervous system. It's extremely good for you to have a good gut, uh, good bacteria in your gut. And that's where taking a probiotic and eating fermented foods comes into play. Um, it's another reason to eat more fiber. Your, that, that good bacteria, it thrives on being able to attack fiber, things that you can't actually digest. You want that going in so that your bacteria is strong. The good bacteria is strong in your small intestine. Okay? You want that to be of extremely good health. So even if you are, like you're, you're eating yogurt, once a day, awesome. Way to go. Greek yogurt once a day, great. You're eating sauerkraut once a day, fantastic. You're sucking down kimchi once a day. Hey, cool, man. Uh, you might stink a little bit. You might have a, you know, some uh, indigestion, maybe, but I agree with you. It's delicious. Uh, fermented pickles is another one. Uh, kefir is another one that I don't totally suggest just because uh, it's really easy. It's like ice cream. It's just like, it's dessert. I mean, kefir, yeah, cool, but treat it like a dessert. It's because that's what it is. So if you're having those things, awesome, way to go, fantastic. You want those things in your diet, still have a probiotic supplement. You want one in your, in, in your nutritional regimen, okay? Probiotics are extremely, extremely good for you. I would say in order of importance of those top three, probiotic, fish oil, vitamin D, everybody should be on them. I will say the fish oil, if you're gonna get a fish oil, it 
I'll show you a couple brands. I'll, I'll talk about a couple brands here in a second that you could buy from that are going to be worth it. But you're going to end up spending a little bit of money for fish oil and and for a probiotic. And that's more of an investment. I will tell you, there are most of the brands out there. They are not. It's just a cost. You're you're not buying anything. You're buying garbage. Okay. So they are. Those things are way more expensive than the good ones because you actually get something out of the good ones, right? All right. Okay, past that, what about, what would you take past that? So, fish oil, probiotic, vitamin D, you're on those, great, awesome. Okay, I think that everybody can basically stop there. If you want to take it a step further though, I'm not going to stop you. I'm not going to stop you from taking that. And there are three in the next category also. So your foundational level are those three, but the next, found, the next level would be... I would move towards a greens drink, and by greens drink, everybody thinks that I'm saying green tea. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm talking about free uh, vegetables that have been frozen and dried, dried and frozen into a powder that you can add to uh, water and you can in in ingest that way. Okay, this is going to increase the alkalinity of your body. Alkalinity actually helps with healing, and it helps. With that. It's the reason that you eat vegetables. It's, uh, it's much better than taking a multivitamin. Did you notice how a multivitamin wasn't in any of these? And I will tell you two brands that got zero, zero stars on all tests with the, the only uh, regulation or the only scale that is actually worth looking at and they got zero stars and it's one a day and it's, and it's Centrum. And the funny thing about both of those is that they are the most sub sold supplement in the world by far, drastically. More people buy one a day in Centrum than anything else combined, basically. And they suck. They're basically just a fiber pill. They just go right through you. They don't do anything. Now, if you go to sewers, I bet you there's just like Centrum and one a day tablets laying all over the place. Two things that you can do stick one in a glass of water, see what happens. Nothing will happen. Uh, and you would think uh, you put a good one in a good a good uh, multivitamin one that actually is uh, might be decent for you into a glass of water and it's going to dissolve okay? and it's going to turn the water a different color. Also, put one on like a piece of foil and put it in your oven and see what happens. You'll see all the gunk and glue and, and and everything that they have to keep all that together boil up out of it. Me personally, I wouldn't want that going in my body. But I got a little off topic there. Multivitamin, I don't think should be in your top three. I don't think it should be, like, it's like insurance. It's like renter's insurance. If you're renting an, a, an apartment, yeah, it should, it, like for three bucks a month, five bucks a month, you can buy renter's insurance. Is it that big a deal? Is it, yeah, you probably, you, you could do it, you know, but do you really need to? No, you don't. It's, it, I, it's, it's not a bad thing, but it's definitely, I don't think it's worth your money, personally. Uh, I think you're much better off going to fish oil, probiotic, vitamin D. Now, past that, what would you do? Green drink. Green drink is going to be much more important than, than a multivitamin. Green drink is going to have uh, is going to have a better delivery of the vitamins and minerals that that it does have in it. It's going to have the alkalinity. It's going to have a lot of the other things that are going to come along as benefits with the green drink. So green drink, very very good. What else would you take in your third and your in your second foundational level? Well, creatine would actually be up there. Uh, contrary to popular belief, creatine is not a steroid. And it is good for you. Okay? It's, uh, it's actually getting used more and more uh, as a, in research and experiments as a way to treat depression, anxiety, and other mental illnesses. Uh, for some reason, we take creatine, and we only take with as little as five grams per day. We're taking five grams per day, and all of a sudden people's minds work better. Their brains work better. Don't ask me. It's just how it ends up happening. Now, there seems to be some confusion around why, what actually happens with creatine in your body. So, we're back. Okay, good. Sorry, we got we got disconnected there for a second. But creatine, what what happens with creatine? If you we want to talk about the biomechanics of creatine. So basically, to create energy, your body has something called uh, it's an adenosine triphosphate (ATP). So it's an adenosine. Uh, molecule or whatever you want to call it molecule and so it's an A and it's P P P so it's it's adenosine triphosphate when that last P breaks off energy occurs right so when energy occurs we get to move around and do things move our arms talk uh, do exercises uh, uh, throw our kids up in the air. ATP lets us have the energy to live our lives alright so we want ATP running around our body alright now 
now, though, there's uh, an ADP, a, a adenosine diphosphate. So there's an APP, and then this free-floating P just kind of out and around somewhere in, in uh, no man's land. So we want to take that P and reattach it, right? So this is where creatine comes in. Creatine comes in, attaches, makes it a creatine phosphate, and it will break so that the and attach to that ADP, the adenosine phosphate phosphate, to create ATP. Boring yet? Yeah, I know, that one's pretty wild, but that's what creatine does, okay? That's what creatine does. It, it, it supplements the, uh, the whole energy system that creates our ability to live, which is pretty cool. So when we take, but all this mental stuff happens. What's the other one? CoQ10 is the third one. CoQ10 seems to have an anti-aging effect, seems to have a good effect on our skin, especially when we ingest it, not ingest it. That almost sounded like I said shit. Uh, when we ingest it, uh, also as a topical agent, it seems to have a little bit of an effect. It seems better when we ingest it, especially if you're on any kind of beta blocker or statin, you definitely wanna be on a CoQ10 supplement, okay? 30 milligrams, 50 milligrams is a really good starter uh, dose to figure out what works for you. I've taken as much as 300 a day for a while. Now, this is, a, I think this is a little excessive. It's also a pretty expensive supplement, so it's up to you on what you want to decide to do, but it's extremely beneficial. Those are my top six, though. I wouldn't go past much of this. I wouldn't go past much of this. If I do go past this, we're probably looking more towards the zinc and magnesium, and that would just be for somebody that uh, wants uh, better sleep. What's going on, man? You cold? Live? Yeah, we're live right now. Hi. Say hello. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? All right, so, so if you're having trouble sleeping, a zinc and magnesium lets you, it just kind of is a mineral, both are minerals that are just kind of soothing to our body for some reason. Our body just kind of relaxes, and it's not going to put you to sleep, it's just gonna help you just kind of soothe, kind of soothing, kind of relax you out. So that when you do go into your, into bed or onto your couch, wherever you do sleep, you'll go to a deeper, more restful sleep getting more out of the sleep that you do have. So zinc and magnesium can be very good things, but without the nutrition up front, don't think about touching these, get your nutrition together. Without uh, the foundational level, the fish oil, the vitamin D and the probiotic, don't think about going to the next level. Without that next level, I'm saying you're probably questionable whether we even go to a zinc and a magnesium, okay? If you haven't been meditating once per day, every day, that should be the start before we go to zinc and magnesium. You want other things that, to employ other tools uh, before you jump into the supplements, okay? Just the supplement, you do not treat a supplement like a crutch, okay? You wanna go to the, you wanna do the hard stuff first. You wanna get the exercise in, you wanna get your nutrition in, you wanna get your meditation in, and then we start talking about supplementation. Okay. Once our nutrition is on board, then we can start talking about supplements. Once our exercise is on board, well, sometimes when you start exercising, all of a sudden you just start sleeping better. Weird, you put in more physical exercise, you're able to sleep better on the backside. You know, it's not a catch-22, it's one that, that it's kind of circumvents itself, it's very good for you. So, what kind of brands are we talking here? I know I'm kind of running out of time. I think Carlson's is a very good fish oil brand. Do you need to take the liquid? I think that you should. I think the liquid is probably much better off than anything else. Is the capsule fine though? Hey, it's better than, than not taking it. The capsule is very good. The reason that we chose to use Carlson's at Grit Gym is because its, uh, it's price point was still moderate, but it, would, it got rated up with the super expensive uh, supplements. So it got three and a half to four and a half stars uh, on on the, on all of its testing, and so we went with that. Thorn makes a very good probiotic. There's only maybe three or four other companies that I buy probiotics from, but I think we're just scratching the surface of that in the supplement industry because people aren't really asking for it yet. So as that industry starts to build up and people are asking for more and more probiotic, I think that you're going to see better and better probiotic supplements. MTS makes a pretty good creatine. Uh, I really like the creatine, but the creatine, what you want to stick with, what you want to look for is creatine monohydrate. You don't want to be looking for the ethyl ester or the alkalines or, or all these other different uh, types of creatines that are out there. Stick with the monohydrate. It is the safest, the most stable, it's the best it's the best for you, and stick with five grams a day. Do not go over five grams a day. The reason that uh, creatine got a bad rep in the first place, bad reputation in the first place, was because people were taking 50, 60, 70 grams per day. Uh, it was uh, causing huge amounts of problems for the kidneys and a uh, huge amount of uh, kind of GI issues that nobody liked, nobody liked. Um, as far as like 
a lot of these other ones. For, for a greens drink, I really like Bar Leans. I think Bar Leans is kind of like your Mercedes of, of, the, uh, of the greens drink category. Um, would I move to, do I think that everybody should be on a, on a, on a protein? Uh, any kind of protein? No, I think if you're going for fat loss, the last thing that you want to do is add food that you don't like. It's stupid. You don't need a protein shake first thing in the morning to stoke your metabolism. That's not how it works. Shakes should be right after a workout or not at all. Shakes, uh, if you're trying to lose fat, right after a workout or not at all. You're trying to gain muscle, then maybe we need, we're putting shakes in throughout the day because we're trying to gain extra calories to be able to build extra muscle. Remember, lifting is just the catalyst that causes muscle growth. It's the food that you ingest that actually causes the muscle to grow. Lifting is the catalyst, food is what causes the muscle to grow. So you've got to lift and then feed it if you want muscle to grow. If you want fat loss, well then we need to eat less categories. So what would be the purpose in adding more shakes to that? So yeah, I'm gonna say not everybody needs to be on a protein supplement. It is not, it, it's, it's, it'd be ridiculous. So, so that's, a little bit, that's a little bit on supplements. I hope you guys got something out of this. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down in the comment section below. Always, as always, please slap the share button. Obscurity is our biggest issue. Uh, my goal is to help billions of people in a positive way, and I need help in doing that. So you guys sharing this helps me serve my purpose in this life, and uh, hopefully you get a little fulfillment out of it too. I uh, hope you get a ton of fulfillment out of it too. Otherwise, get into Grit Gym. We'd love to see you. But thanks for being here, guys. I really appreciate it.